Thank you everyone for coming to our channel. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, rebuild or overhaul a uh, small motor, DC motor. Um, it's uh, got a max amp amperage rating of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 amp or half an amp. Okay. Um, it is, it's got an operating voltage of 26 to 28 volts DC. Um, currently the motor, uh, prior to, uh, rebuild is running at about, uh, 0.37. Okay. So it's running very, very well at this point. Um, but what we want to do is we want to, uh, bring those numbers down. Okay. Um, you can see right now it's running at like 30, 36, 37. Um, with uh, any motor, uh, the lower the amperage, the lower the draw, uh, the less heat you're going to have and the less wear and tear. So every little bit helps. We're not going to be able to make a big difference, but like I said, every little bit helps. So what we're going to do here is we are going to open up the case. All right. We're removing the, um, the cover to expose the internal components. We're going to go ahead and remove the screws that hold the uh, motor to the housing. Okay, so we'll back those off. And now we will pry the uh, motor away from the housing. Just be careful not to uh, crack the uh, brush holders. Okay, we've set the housing aside and now we're going to remove the, uh, the spacers. We're going to go ahead and remove the shims. Okay, this motor has been shimmed. Okay, now we are uh, peeling back the protective cover uh, so we can have access to the brushes. Using a tweezer, we're going to remove the old brushes. You can see they're in good shape. That's why this motor is running quite well. Okay, uh, but I think we can make a difference by replacing the brushes and the bearings. Okay, so we have the brushes removed. Now we are going to remove the brake. This particular motor has a, uh, a built-in brake, so when the voltage drops below a certain point, uh, the motor will stop instantaneously. The brake will engage and stop the motor. Okay, so removing the retaining nut, lock washer, then there's a shim or very, very thin washer. And from here, we're going to remove the actual brake disc and friction plate. From there, we'll remove the spring, okay, and then we'll remove the key. Or the key way. From here we can just remove the entire armature and we'll remove the shims from the comm side. Okay, we've got a set of shims for the bearing and as you can see uh, shims for the brake disc itself. Okay, to make adjustments to that. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the brushes. Okay, we're just using a soldering iron to uh, carefully remove those old brushes and set them aside. We're going to take a look, taking a look inside the stator winding assembly, brush and brake assembly, uh, just to make sure everything looks good. It's a little dirty in there, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some uh, electrical spray to clean that out well. Okay, looking at the armature, we uh, we see that we have good contact with the brushes, so the armature is in good shape. You can see all the bars have contact. It's good film, a brush film on there. Okay, you can see we got uh, spur gear, uh, drive gear and bearings that will be removed and so we can replace the bearings. We'll do that after we clean up the comm to make sure everything works out well. Okay, so here we are. We're cleaning up the comm. Okay, from here we're going to use an 800 grit sandpaper. 
okay and that that uh, cleaned it up quite well now we're going to a thousand grit emery board from here we're going to remove the armature from the lathe take a close look at it we want to make sure that we don't have any debris in between the bars okay so with a very fine pick, I'm going to clean up in between the bars and bevel the edges. I like to have this uh, fixed in the lathe so it's it's easier to turn. Okay, here's a close-up shot, and you can see the filings that came off the comm, okay? The edges are nice and beveled. You want to bevel the edges. Here I'm showing the drive end bearing, okay? Give you an idea. Uh, that's got a, quite a bit of play in it, so you can see that that is worn out. So we're gonna be replacing the bearings with brand new, uh, brand new set of bearings, okay? Uh, here we have a, uh, a snap-on fixture. It's a uh, bearing splitter. Okay, we're gonna use that to remove the gear, the drive gear or the spur gear and also remove the drive end bearing. Okay. Make sure you have the proper tools when removing gears, okay, especially when dealing with an armature because you can very easily damage the windings. Okay, here we're putting it Okay, so we're putting putting the clamp uh, or the uh, the bearing splitter in the arbor press and using a punch we're going to go ahead and drive that shaft uh, out of the spur gear okay applying pressure that is going to drive that out okay removing the armature from the splitter we can then remove the the, uh, the spur gear, okay, and then the bearing. Okay, we've got our new set of bearings. I'm gonna open those up. Okay, you want to make sure you check, make sure that the bearings are identical to the old bearings, using a little bit of lubrication to make the bearings go on easier. Okay, you can see we've we've uh, installed both the bearings and the spur gear. All right, so from here, we're going to go ahead and be install the uh, overhauled armature back into the uh, the unit itself, okay, the drive end. Put the shim in there. Make sure that we've got the right setting on that here. We're replacing the old shrink tubing. Okay. Anytime you're inside of a fixture, you want to go ahead and replace any of the components that have worn out. Okay, it's a simple, simple and quick procedure. Uh, no sense in leaving old components um, inside a an overhauled unit. Okay, here we're just going to heat that up. Heat gun. From here, we're just feeding the wires back through. Uh, I'll call it an end cap. And the drive end end cap. Okay, you want to slowly bring those wires through. Did not have the need to use the shim on the com end. Okay, um, you know when going back together, there was uh, uh, the play. Um, the end play was within specifications. Okay, here we're just tightening up the mounting screws. You want to tighten them a little at a time. Okay, bring them in or draw them in evenly. So go back and forth. Takes a little bit more time, but it's the uh, safest way to do it. Okay, so wiring looks good. The, the shaft or the armature uh, turns freely. Now from here, we're installing or reinstalling the, uh, the shims for the, uh, the brake. Okay, reinstalling the spring, the, uh, the friction plate or pressure plate, 
and the brake disc itself. Okay, from, from here, we're next we're going to install the keyway. Washer, lock washer. And the retaining nut. Okay, you can reuse the lock washer if it's in good shape. If it looks like it's got any work hardening, if it if it's not in good shape, make sure you replace it. Okay, you don't want that lock washer to uh, to fail. Now, what we're going to take a look at, we're going to check the clearance and the brake. Okay, make sure that we have the correct amount of play. All right, there you go. Looks good. And from here, we are. Uh, bending over the, uh, the lock washer tabs, okay, to make good contact with the retaining nut. Okay, from here we'll just check specifications on the brake real quick. And uh, next we are going to install the new brushes. We got a brand new set of brushes. Never want to use the old brushes. Got a brand new set of brushes. We're going to go ahead and uh, very carefully uh, using a tweezer, okay, uh, install those brushes. Okay, I've got a little custom tool that I use to pull back the, to draw back, draw back the spring. Okay, and then release the spring down onto the brush. Make sure that that spring is seated in the brush properly. Next, we're going to use uh, some solder with our soldering iron. To make a solid connection uh, with the wiring and the new brush. Okay, now we're showing the opposite side. So now we've got both sides complete. We can now test the brake and the motor functions before we install the protective shield, the brush shield, and the uh, and the protective cover. Okay. So here we're installing that protective shield, that film with a new piece of tape. Make sure that that is securely in place and then we can install the protective cover. Okay, after we install this protective cover, we're going to go ahead and mask off the, uh, the body and then finish the motor assembly or refinish the motor assembly. Okay, so we returned from the paint booth. Uh, we're removing the masking tape. We applied a protective coating of epoxy paint. Very hard uh, uh, paint and uh, here we are now testing the unit after the overhaul and you can see that the amperage draw has dropped from around 0.37 down to uh, 0.33. And, and this number will continue to drop as the brushes, the new brushes are run in. Okay, expect um, after running in the brushes about 20 minutes, uh, this uh, the amperage draw will drop down to about 0.3. Um, doesn't seem, you know, like I said in the beginning, doesn't seem like a huge number. But uh, the lower the amperage draw, uh, the lower the heat, um, the lower the energy usage, uh, the, the unit itself will last longer, so the longevity uh, will be increased. So there's numerous benefits um, uh, to, this, uh, to this overhaul. All right, well, thank you very much for watching, taking the time out of your day to watch our video. Hopefully it's been a, uh, a huge help to you. And uh, we just want to thank you and uh, uh, have a great rest of your day.